name is Joanne and welcome back to Flourish. Do you know this is week 12? The season is coming to a close and we are already getting, I'm already getting sad. We're already missing you, but we're so glad that you're with us today. So thank you for inviting us into your home as we talk about the comfort that the Psalms bring us. If you're a follower of Jesus and if you have a copy of your Bible, I'm sure that you have discovered that the Psalms are the heart of the Bible. That's what we wanna talk about today. There's a beautiful quote from a fourth century theologian. His name is Athanasius and he says this about the book of Psalms. The Psalms have a unique place in the Bible because as most scriptures speak to us, the Psalms speak for us. Have you ever felt that you can't put words to what your heart is feeling? Your emotions maybe are raging one way or another, but you can't quite find the words to express yourself. Well, when we jump into the book of Psalms, the authors of the Psalms do that for us. Um, they have a way of articulating our emotions, our emotions when we can't do that on ourselves. And I love this quote right here. It says, God often uses the Psalms to examine and open our eyes to every area of our inner life before the one who is the keeper of our soul, bringing us to repentance, praise, or whatever his divine diagnosis may require. Sometimes we feel isolated or alone, or sometimes we're depressed. And the, the Psalms remind us that we're not on this journey of life alone. We get to hold the hands of the authors of Psalms who remind us that we walk in tandem with them. So today we're gonna drink deep from the well of living water as we jump into the Psalms and find comfort in those pages. I've got some of my very close friends with me today, Candy and Laura, Sharon and Lisa, and we're going to talk about the beautiful book of Psalms. Um, I wanna start also with a quote from my beloved husband, Tom. My husband's a pastor. He's been a pastor for over 40 years and as a great theologian study of the Bible. And, and he says that the Psalms are quoted in the New Testament more than any other book in the Bible combined. Isn't that crazy? Do you know the book of Psalms is 150 individual Psalms or songs as they're called. And they're often, they were set to music and they were really set to worship for God, is what their whole purpose was to worship God. They're written by several different authors, all of them inspired by God, but you know they were written over a span of over a thousand years. Isn't that interesting? And even though they were written over a long period of time, there's this divine golden thread that weaves them all together with a consistency that only God can do. And it's interesting to note that Psalm 1, begins with God blessing man. And the very last Psalm, which is Psalm 150, ends with man blessing God. Isn't that beautiful? Again, the beauty of God's word. And then in between, we find every life experience, every emotion and everything in between expressed in all of those Psalms. On a side note, so that we are grammatically correct, when we read one Psalm, it's singular, Psalm. But if we're referring to one or, or more than one Psalm or the book of Psalms, it's plural, Psalms. So then we sound like we're mature spiritual people when we know what we're talking about. Okay, so let's focus on the different types of Psalms. They're divided into categories. There's many different types of Psalms. Today, we're gonna focus on four. And the first one, and, and they all, let me, let me back up. These different Psalms are, are divided in a way that communicate different types of feeling, different types of life circumstances. So that's why they're divided and labeled the way that they are. The first type that we're gonna look at is Psalms of praise. Ah, don't we love to praise God for he alone is worthy. And so the Psalms of praise are that, pure praise lifted up to God. They call us to worship. Some exist as the author's personal moments of adoration to the God that they love. It's like they're inviting us into their own personal worship encounter with God. But what happens is when that psalmist invites us into that psalm and we read it, we join them in worshiping the great I am. So Candy, let me ask you first, what is one of your favorite types of psalms? Actually, before you say that, let me tell you a little bit about them. I got ahead of myself. Okay. 
Excuse me for that, ladies. <laughs> um, these Psalms give us also a preview of who the Messiah is. So when people mm. back before Jesus was born would read the Psalms, they would get inclinations, they would get definitions of who the Messiah was going to be so that when he came, they would recognize him. For us who live after Jesus has come, we look at those Psalms and we go, oh my gosh, every one of them are fulfilled in Jesus. Mm. And so that's what praise Psalms do. There's lots of different praise Psalms and listed on your screen are gonna be all different types that are Psalms of praise. So now, Candy to you. Okay. Your favorite praise yes. Psalm. Well, there's so many, it's hard to pick just one, but I did pick Psalm 146 and it says, praise the Lord, praise mm. the Lord, oh my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. Mm. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not trust in princes, in mortal man in whom there is no salvation. His spirit departs, he returns to the earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. How blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. Mm, the beautiful. Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous, protects the strangers. He supports the fatherless and the widows. Mm. And he thwarts the way of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Wow. Amen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there is so much beauty in that psalm. Did you hear how he addressed the widows and the orphans? If you're a widow, if you're an orphan, hey, I consider myself an orphan now in the sense that both of my parents have passed away and are in heaven. That is who we can cling to. And that was what Psalm again, Candy? 146. Psalm 146. Mm -hmm. So if there's a widow out there, I encourage you, open your Bible to Psalm 146 to find encouragement. Mm -hmm. And we, again, we hear a little bit of that problem, mm -hmm. but then the solution and, and praise be to God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Candy. That's beautiful. Thank you. Of course. Well, another type of psalm is a lamenting psalm. And a lamenting psalm or song, those are prayers that are given to God during times of trouble. Um, when people are in deep pain and agony. Oh my goodness, there have been times that my heart has been so broken or I've been so distressed over a situation, often when one of my children were struggling in their faith. And I would turn to the lamenting Psalms. They give us such encouragement. They help us to know that we are not alone. Um, and the beautiful thing about these songs, Psalms is that they are cries of desperation. And the, the person that's penning that Psalm is not hiding their emotions. They're very honest with how they're feeling. And that gives me hope because I can bring whatever I'm feeling to God, whether I'm hurt, whether I'm disappointed, whether I'm angry, God knows what we're feeling anyway. But when we bring it to him in truth and honesty, ah, it takes it off that burden off our heart. But what these Psalms always do is they begin with those feelings of sorrow or depression or what have you, but they end filled with hope in who God is. They end in worship of who God is and in thanksgiving and gratitude for what he has done. Lamenting Psalms, I think, are some of the popular ones that people like to cling to during difficult times. So Sharon, I think you're the one that's got some lamenting information for us. Yes, I do. <laughs> because I spent a lot of time lamenting in the last seven years. I think if you've been watching our program, you've heard our story about our son, our precious son. And uh, I definitely flipped through many psalms about our daughter as well, but there was one psalm that really rose to the top for me during this time, and it was Psalm 13. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says. <clears throat> How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How mm. long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider 
Answer me, O oh Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Mm. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him or her. Lest my foes rejoice because I'm shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with mm. me. And let me tell you, there were many days that I felt like I was crumbled down to the dust. Mm -hmm. And I, all I could do was weep and sigh. How long, oh Lord, how long? And then he got me to the point where he was lifting me up where I was standing, saying, all I have mm -hmm. is salvation in you. And that is enough. Mm -hmm. And you know, I praise God for that because he taught me, I am enough. You cannot depend on anything but me. Amen. You know? And so God sang over me mm. as I was lifting this up to him. Wow. wow. Mm. That is beautiful. And you know, the thing about God's word is that um, it says in Hebrews that God's word is living, it's active, it's sharper than a sword. It's able to pierce our heart and separate our soul from our spirit. And so just as God's word, this was written, you know, a couple thousand years ago, and yet it's just as relevant today and it can apply to our lives because God's word is alive, it's fresh. And that's why it ministers to us when we're hurting. It's as if it was just written. You know what I love to think about with God's word? God's word, the Bible, is because he spoke it through people, it's inspired, it's anointed. It's literally God's word on a page, his breath on a page. Our Bibles are precious to us. Okay, now we have another type of Psalm. Thank you so much, Sharon. Psalms of Ascent. Psalms of Ascent, there's 15 of these Psalms and they were sung when pilgrims or worshipers were going to Jerusalem up to the temple to worship God. And you know, Israel, when you come in to Jerusalem, you always have to go up a hill. So as, that's why it's called Psalms of Ascent, as they would ascend that hill, the pilgrims would sing these songs. And it was songs of going home, going to worship God. And these songs also refer to, there was 15 steps that would go up to the temple. And you'd have two steps and then a long break then two steps and a long break, and it would cause you to pause and to reflect. And the pilgrims, as they would walk up to those steps to prepare to meet God, they would prepare their hearts through the worship of the words of these psalms. So these 15 psalms are called, again, the Psalms of Ascent. There's great power in these. Um, and they're beautiful, beautiful psalms. And Laura, you were going to tell us about those Psalms of Ascent. Fill I us sure in. am. I'm excited. <laughs> I have the Holy Bible here, but I'm going to read from a journal book that is about Psalms. And what's so beautiful is actually this Psalm is about family, the blessing of family. And my daughter gave it to me. And so I just cherish it. So I'm going to read from it. Mm, beautiful. But the title of this Psalm is blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. And we might have covered that before, mm -hmm. you know, in our seasons, but what does really fear of the Lord mean? Um, and in Proverbs 1, 7a, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So it's not like be afraid of him. It's more like an awe mm -hmm. and reverence. Right. God is holy. He is right. almighty. He's majestic. And so um, this is a beautiful promise. Again, mm -hmm. we've talked about promises. And so it really talks about the family. Mm -hmm. And family, like everybody else, is very important to us. And I know they are important to you too. Okay, so let me get reading. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the mm, Lord. Amen. And let me, a couple more verses 
The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's mm. children. Oh. Peace be upon Israel. And you know what? We can substitute for Iran, for America. This is a psalm written for a man, by a man, but we can replace mm -hmm. it with, with us. That's you right. Know? So we can claim it. Amen. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. I love that for your children and your children's children. How many of you are grandparents out there? Raise your hand. Can't see you, but I know you're raising your hand. <laughs> We're, most of us are grandparents here. And boy, there's no greater joy than seeing that our children are walking with the Lord, but also our grandchildren. Such great joy in that. Okay, so that was our Psalms of Ascent. Now let's flip to another one. Um, there are also Psalms of Thanksgiving or Psalms of Gratitude. These are fun to read as well. Um, these Psalms capture the essence of trusting and praising God for his greatness and his power. Uh, we know our God is a great God. He is a God of almighty power. And when we see his power on display, what does that do? But it wants us, makes us to want to fall on our faces in humble thanksgiving and gratitude. And that's what these Psalms do. It's interesting that these Psalms also typically have a theme or an image that goes with them. For instance, if you're familiar with the 23rd Psalm, the image in that is that of a shepherd. So a lot of these Psalms have an image that we can cling to, that we can relate to, that gives us a sense of connection. Um, so Lisa, you wanna share with us your, one of your favorite Psalms of gratitude. Okay. I really do like Psalm 23. So if you haven't memorized it or read it lately, I do highly That's beautiful. The, yes. the image of the shepherd is uh, very dear to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, yes, gratitude, as I look at it, is really a tenderizer for our hearts. It keeps our eyes focused on God, who is the source of all gifts, all good gifts to us. And gratitude, mm -hmm. I've learned, is a decision that we make. It's a will to be grateful. Amen. And so that means we have a choice. So um, when I need help remembering that, I go to the Psalms and it helps me to refuse to let my situations and circumstances determine mm -hmm. um, my stress level for the day or, <laughs> or just my attitude that's going to infect those around me and, um, and discolor my gratefulness for life. So anyway, David did write this during a time when he had many, many threats on his life. So he was super uncomfortable, mm -hmm. super uncomfortable. But um, God's words, of course, as you said, they were inspired. He wrote them, David wrote them, but they're God's words to us. And so I'll read some from uh, the 34th chapter of the Psalms. And um, it begins with, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Oh, extol the Lord. That means to bless him, to speak mm, good of him. Yes. Um, my soul will boast in the Lord. Let all hear and rejoice. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Yeah. Those who look to him are radiant. Ah, you can just that. see that on the faces of, mm. of our friends. I mean, when we look to him, we really are radiant and our faces are never covered in shame. Um, he has saved me out of all my troubles and the angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him, not fear, but who look to him for wisdom and he delivers them. Mm. So I taste and see that the Lord, he is good and blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Um, excuse me, I flipped two pages at once. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Mm. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Mm. Amen. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The Lord redeems his servants and no one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. Mm. Wow, such beautiful words again. Word. I'm sure your heart's been captured by some of the beautiful words of these various Psalms that have been read. Lisa, would you read those last part again about going from his, those who are radiant will not be ashamed and the oh, verses yes. that's so beautiful. Uh -huh. And I, I hope that encourages your heart. 
uh, just before that it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Mm. And those who look to him for redemption are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. Mm. Wow. That just fills my heart with joy. To hear that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. God's word is filled with such hope and these yes. psalms just communicate to mm -hmm. us. They, as, a, as that very first quote from Athanasius says that the psalms speak for us. They really take our mm -hmm. thoughts and our feelings and they put them into words that sometimes I can't come up with on my own. But when I hear those words, that lifts my heart up to the Lord and I have renewed hope. And then I feel like I'm not alone as I'm walking through whatever situation that I'm walking through. It brings a lot of peace. It yeah. does. And it joy. does. And joy. Yeah. 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 The Psalms speak mm -hmm. for us. Well, we've got about five minutes left on our show. And I thought the best way that we could end this is by praying for you. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I know we all love to do as we go through the Psalms is when we're struggling with a certain problem or trial or situation is flip through and find a psalm that really ministers to us. I may read a psalm and I think, oh, that's really sweet, but it didn't quite get my heart. Then I'll read another <laughs> psalm and another psalm. And then all of a sudden I'll open up a psalm and it's like it's been written just for me. Mm -hmm. Do you guys find that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope you do too. And when you get to those places where you find those Psalms that minister to your spirit, mark them down in your Bible. Memorize those words. You can even make them your life Psalm. Remember we talked right, about yes. that God highlighting a Psalm that you're like, you know, this speaks to my life. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pray this over my, my child, each child having a life Psalm, your husband. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. I'm glad you, you reminded us to do that. Anything anybody else wants to share before we close in prayer? This time has been delightful. I can't believe this is our 12th week. We are going to miss you all. So we're going to enjoy this last time of praying together yes, before yes. our last episode. Yes. Well, why don't we close in prayer? Join us, would you please? Oh, Lord Jesus, how mm. we thank you for your beautiful word. How mm. we thank you, how you do mm. sing over us like your word says. Mm -hmm. And we ask right now, you see the hurting. You are our compassionate That's God. Right, Lord. You see those that are lamenting, crying mm. out to you, their mm -hmm. faces in the dust. Mm. Shepherd of our souls, we ask that you would take their hands, that you would lift them out of the dust, that you would take your hands and wipe the tears off of their mm. face. You'd kiss their faces and you'd make them glow mm -hmm. in radiance, Lord God. And we ask this in your name. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Mm. Thank you that you love us and that you care about us and that through your word, you've written to us ways to communicate even with you using your own language. So Lord, thank you for the Psalms of Thanksgiving. And I pray that um, as the ladies and all the viewers have listened uh, to this episode today, that they will take these promises mm. for their very own and put them in their heart That's right. and let you speak to them uh, along their way in all their broken places or in their happy places, in their places of shame. Mm -hmm. Let us all, let us all, uh, even in all our circumstances, do as your word says, mm -hmm. which is to give thanks in all circumstances, mm -hmm. for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Mm -hmm. And that is a test of our will, Father. So enable us by your spirit mm -hmm. to give thanks to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for these women that are listening. Let them know how truly, truly they are a gift to us mm -hmm. and that you love them and that uh, you want us all to be in the kingdom of heaven together. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I did that. So be beautifully prayed, um, Sharon and Lisa. And I just, I'm convicted on my heart that I pray that the viewers have access to a Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Because we've shared yes, so Lord. much of your That's word. Jesus. And yeah. I just hope that um, they have it in their hands, in their mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. And yes, so I just want to lift up their families. I want to lift up them and their families. You are so ready to mm -hmm. bless the family. Yes, mm -hmm. And they can call on you and mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. And so I just hope that you've got plans for them. 
and so plans to prosper them That's right, and Lord. so we give these viewers to you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, again we're so thankful um, we're thankful for you mm -hmm. first and foremost and um, just come to them and open up their hearts if they're not believers in you Mm. Yes, Lord. Father, we are so thankful to you for the way you loved us and how you've given your life for us through your son, Jesus. And I just pray, Father, that right now you would open the heart eyes of every woman and child and man watching and listening to, to think on their lives and think about the beauty and the things that they have to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. You are worthy to be praised, yes, as the psalm says, because you are God Almighty and you deserve mm -hmm. all glory all and all our honor and all our praise. Mm -hmm. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Wow, this has been a delightful conversation. Um, we pray the Psalms will become one of your favorite books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Friends, thank yes. you for sharing your hearts thank with you. us today. And we pray for you that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that the Lord will make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and that he will give you peace. That is our prayer. That is our blessing for you today. So will you come back and join us next time? We've got one more episode before season three of Flourish is complete. And I will say on the last episode, I'll give you a little pre-runner. It's going to be super fun because we're going to have our whole team on it. And you're going to get to see all of us together in one place. You don't want to miss it. So come back next time and join us at Flourish. Oh, we love you guys. God bless Bye. you. Bye now. Thank you.